I was born in uh, Brooklyn, New York, 1951. And um, I was a skinny child. I'm very introverted. I had an ear infection and had nerve damage. I lost 85% of my hearing. That had a huge effect on my life because it made me different than everyone else. That made me very introverted as a child. I have kind of uh, like, would you say, a love and hate relationship with my father growing up because he had a hard time accepting me having this handicap because I wasn't perfect, the perfect son. He kind of pushed me and taught me never to feel sorry for myself. Every week, twice a week, I would have to take a train through the city to learn to lip read. So basically it was very hard for me because I would finish elementary school during the day and then go through the city and then come home in the evening like 6 p.m. It was almost like a full-time job. Being very introverted, I had a kind of a Walter Mitty lifestyle. And I remember when I discovered the comic book, Spider-Man, the Hulk. That was like maybe six, seven, eight, nine years old at the time. It was like very therapeutic for me because it gave me a chance to escape and fantasize that someday that's the direction I want to go. That's the kind of superhero I like to become. I was reading these Hulk comics, admiring the physique on the Hulk, and I saw a magazine that said Muscle Power, and Dave Draper was on the cover. Before you know, I'm looking at this magazine, and I said, oh boy, and I see these different bodybuilders doing different poses, and that made me discover muscles, what muscles all about. And I ended up buying now muscle magazines, bodybuilding magazines, learning about bodybuilding, and want to know how I can maximize my body. I remember my dad took me to the movie to see Steve Reeves, Hercules, and Hercules Unchained. So when I saw Steve Reeves, the way he was built, and he was lifting all these monstrous pounds of juice, and in fact, he was fighting all these people, that's what I wanted to be. The next step was me to start working out and getting the feeling of picking up the iron, and it gave me a great feeling. I just like working out. The more I saw my body started to change, the more I became obsessed. I just loved working out. It was like an obsession to me. I had to do that. It meant to me more than anything. It gave me a tremendous boost to my self-esteem. Even though at the time, bodybuilding was a shallow sport, and everyone kind of against it. I would get ridiculed by my friends. They kept laughing at me. But I didn't let it affect me, because every time I trained, it made me feel good about myself. When I was about 19 years old when I entered my first competition. I came 23rd place. But I remember that night when I stepped on stage, and the flash bulbs going off, I flecked and posed and everything, people clapping for me, and I'm saying to myself, wow, they're clapping for me. I mean, this is something that I'm really proud of. That night I came home, I told my family, I never come less than third place again from this day on. So I ended up mapping out my routine and, and training twice as hard. I've lost so much of my life when I was young growing up. To fulfill that part of me made me extremely competitive. That's what I love about bodybuilding. It's a solo sport. And I just love the feeling of competing with myself. I've won the Mr. Eastern America, Teenage America, Mr. Teenage America, Eastern Teenage America, Mr. America, Mr. International, runner up Mr. Olympia twice, and Mr. Universe twice. The youngest one to win the universe, I was 21 years old. It was my greatest achievement because I know when I won the universe, that's the dream coming true. That broke the mold and made me realize that someone like myself or my problem the sky's the limit. I was living in New York. They approached me about doing this movie, Pumping on. I was ecstatic to be in the movie because I knew that whatever happened, I was part of something that was going to be history because of myself and Schwarzenegger. And of course, all of the other time was like five times Mr. Olympia. And to be on stage with him, you know, you're on stage with the best. It was a lot of fun. It put bodybuilding on the map instead of where people would put shame to it. I got a phone call. They said they were casting for the Hulk, which, I, I mean, I was, like, blown away. They were filming the pilot. using Richard Keel, who played George on James Bond. And Richard Keel was a big guy. He was, like, 7'2", but he didn't have the physique. And one day, a director came on the set with his son. And the boy said to, to, to his father, the director, he said, Daddy, that's not the Hulk. And the, fa and the father said, why? And he said, the boy said, the Hulk has got to be big, big, huge muscles. They started to get nervous to realize that they had to find the right person to play the Hulk because they knew the show would be in trouble. When I went down for the screen test, I knew I had this part because when they saw my physique, my body, and I was able to show different emotion without speaking, able to cry and everything, then I knew I landed the part. And to have that part, knowing that it was something I've been dreaming about for 20 years as a little boy, reading the comics, fantasized to becoming the Hulk, it was kind of like a dream coming true.
I knew that with me having that part, the show was going to be successful. It could, no one can play the Hulk by myself. He was well aware that people thought he was a monster. He was a real gentle soul that he didn't mean to hurt anybody. He was always running because he was frightened. And the Hulk knew that every time he hears Simon, his life gonna be in danger. He always kind of kept running, kept running. Almost like King Kong. The most challenging aspect playing the character was to show the emotions without speaking. Because when you're acting, the emotions and everything. So I had to show the emotions through the makeup, through the eyes and the teeth. Because I wanted him to be a wonderful character, not just a typical monster. I would arrive on the set sometime like 4.30, 5 in the morning and get made up. They applied a forehead and nose paint. And then they used a special grease makeup on the face. Then the body would take like four or five coats to guys by hand, putting the makeup on. Then after that, they applied the wig, then the eyes and teeth. Then they would put the wardrobe, put the pants and shirt on. So you talk about three or three and a half hours. I did most of the stuff myself. And uh, a lot of times I didn't want to do it, especially all the uh, crashing through the window, through the wall. I had to jump off second story building. They couldn't have anybody else do it because no one had the physique to match mine. The hardest thing for me was not really playing the Hulk. The hardest thing for me was able to maintain the condition because sometimes I'm finished nine o'clock at night shooting. Just an hour to take the makeup off. I just went straight to the gym. Trained for an hour, went home, collapsed, fell asleep, back on the set. At five o'clock the next morning, that was brutal. Bill was more like a, like a mentor to me. Bill was a great guy and a veteran actor. I loved watching him when he was doing My Favorite Marching, Courtship with Eddie's Father, The Magician, The Hulk was his fifth series. Bill took me under his wing, because I've never taken acting classes before, so it was all new to me with the learning process. He was a certified magician, and he would do magic tricks on the set. And he did jokes too, and he had a wonderful sense of humor. And he was very witty, very quick. So he would play jokes with me and other people, and he was so subtle, so quick, and before you realize, he got you. The Hulk was loved by everyone. I don't know one person who doesn't like the Hulk. We had the tram that would go by, and people would just wave when I'm filming on the set. They would just get excited. The kids would jump off the tram, and they want to take pictures and everything. When the show first hit the air, I remember that I had to go to different places to do with different appearances. And I remember they just scream, the hawks, the hawk, and it was almost frightening. I mean, like, you don't know which way to turn. You want to just go under the car, just hide away. Bill and I felt secure with the show going to go another season. I was at the White House, near the White House, going to meet the President of the United States on some function. And then I heard on the radio that the show was canceled. And I didn't believe it, it, it was true until I eventually I called Bill myself, and he was surprised. Everyone was kind of shocked. I think the show was canceled because someone at CBS felt that the show had an inflated budget. I think it was one of the most expensive shows on television. But I think they regret it now. They're never doing that. Coming back to movies of the week, I think it was about 80 years later. I was a little nervous because I used to have nightmares about the makeup, but it was like yesterday. It just came back with like a breeze, like a reunion. As a matter of fact, we even closer than ever before. Bill was directing. Working with Bill, as a director, I felt very safe, wonderful. We were filming in Vancouver, and the nice thing about it is that we didn't have any executive telling us how to run the show, and we had the show in our hand and run the show the way we wanted to be run. Also bringing the character of Thor and bringing the character of Daredevil, the wonderful idea. But I think eventually we're going to have the Hulk start speaking. Eventually, it would have left to that point. We're going to do a movie called The Revenge of the Hulk, where the old mind is in the Hulk's body. It's going to be a wonderful twist to the character, but then Bill got sick and passed away.